Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, capsule wardrobe workshop. That was a quite a difficult one. I practiced it this afternoon. I'm, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. It's my first uh, workshop in English about this theme. So I'm a, I'm a little nervous, but I think if you give me some time to remember the right words, then uh, it should be okay. Well, in the start, you're going to see me a bit and um, the screen. I will show it to you now. And uh, after a while, I will be gone so you can see all the information uh, very well. Um, my name is Laura and I will tell you a bit more about myself uh, later in this workshop. Uh, first, some practical information. I wanted to check if you can hear me well. If you can't hear me, then of course you can't hear this either. Um, but I will ask Cleo, she is the uh, moderator for tonight. She will keep an eye on your questions and other things um, to put it in the in the chat as well, which you found. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Um, if you can't hear me, that might be a problem with your device. Try it with another device, uh, your phone, your tablet, a laptop. And if that doesn't work, um, then no worries, we'll record this session and you'll get a reply in your, uh, a replay, sorry, <laughs> in your uh, mail tomorrow. So you don't have to uh, miss a thing. So Cleo, maybe you can ask uh, the Oreo biscuits <laughs> to, uh, if she could try it on another device. If other people can hear me, then I think we're good to go. Yes, cool, Andrea, thank you very much for letting me know. So I would like to um, uh, shortly uh, let you know what we'll be doing tonight. Um, well, I will start with a short introduction about what a capsule wardrobe is and why I am hosting this session tonight uh, together with Brabantia. Uh, I will share the advantages of your having your own capsule wardrobe, um, which also will show why a capsule wardrobe is so popular uh, at the moment. Uh, we will talk about the Lynn Challenge, of course. Uh, I will share some practical information about the Lynn Challenge, the rules, the dates. So you can have an easy start um, with it tomorrow. And I will help you to build a capsule wardrobe for your Lynn Challenge in five steps. And these are the steps I also use in my capsule wardrobe courses. And uh, these will help you to create a very personal selection that suits your style and suits your life, as I think there's no such thing as a standard capsule wardrobe that works for everyone. Um, and these steps, in short, I will come back to them later, are uh, one, inspiration, your dreams, what style makes you happy, two, is your life. This step is about the, the uh, uh, clothes you need for the life you live. Um, what weather, um, what activities do you have in your life? Uh, step three is my personal one <laughs> of my favorite one. It's about making a personal color palette. Uh, it's magic what color can do for you. And I will show you um, how it will make your life easier when you do find a personal color palette. And step four is about how to combine items more easily. I will share you two uh, assignments that you can do to practice your combination skills. And step five, finally, uh, is about selecting your items. I know many articles start with selecting, but I think you need to know a couple of things for uh, before you can actually get your uh, capsule wardrobe together. So um, questions, very welcome. I love to answer your questions. In the end, there will be time for questions and I might check the uh, chat in between as well. Uh, Cleo is here tonight. She is our moderator and she will keep track of the questions. So you can ask them in the chat during my presentation and I will come back to them. And um, this session will last around an hour, uh, but this also depends on how many questions there will be. Um, I love questions, so don't hesitate to ask anything you want. And um, I will do my best to answer uh, all or most of them. And um, I will see, I see the chat is rolling there. Okay, cool. Many people can hear me very well. So I hope the Oreo biscuits found another way to, um, to get the uh, 
it working and otherwise she will receive the replay tomorrow so this is the moment that you i will enlarge my screen and you will see won't see me anymore but you will still hear me so here we go and first i would like to ask you uh, a question and i'm very curious to hear what you think about how many clothes do you have in your wardrobe and you can see it below the presentation and you can pick the one that, that suits you most do you think you have less than 50 items 50 to 150 items 150 to 250 items or do you think you have over 250 items oh this is interesting it feels like yesterday we had the elections in the netherlands and then you also see these <laughs> charts like going up and down ah oh, this is interesting there's no wrong or right you you must there's a reason always for the amount of clothes in your in your closet so don't feel ashamed or um yeah uncomfortable about the answer you will give Okay, cool. So we have 14% um, says less than 50. Maybe these are my old uh, capsule wardrobe students. That would be cool. 50% uh, says 50 to 150. Uh, then 26% says 150 to 250 and 8% says over 250. Well, actually you are um, in the Netherlands, the average person uh, has 100 and uh, 73 so 173 pieces of clothing so you are a little bit below average uh, re related to that but that could also be because well if you are interested in the challenge it could be that you're also already a bit of a conscious consumer or um or just interested in how you could minimalize and optimize your wardrobe even more so that's interesting um the most interesting fact or maybe shocking fact about those 173 items of clothing is that 50 of them we don't wear. And that might sound shocking or a lot, but if you would count your own closet and be really honest with yourself, there's quite a chance that you will find out the same. <coughs> because research shows that um, on average, the uh, we wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time. Um, so it would be interesting if we could only have the 20%. And that's where the capsule wardrobe comes in. Um, I will tell you a bit about the history of the capsule wardrobe. Uh, it's invented by Susie Foe. And she was a British lady uh, living in London in the 70s. So it's already 50 years uh, ago. And um, she thought as a boutique owner uh, that every woman should have a selection of essential items that won't go out of fashion and are easy to combine over and over again. And actually that's the same definition as we use nowadays because we still talk about a selection of items. A capsule wardrobe is not endless or like a hundred pieces. Uh, the items are usually easy to combine with each other and they stay with you for a longer period of time. Well, if you Google a capsule wardrobe, you often will find quite a standard image with a white blouse, a neutral colors, uh, a little black dress, uh, and a camel colored trench coat. And although it looks very appealing, I don't believe this kind of capsule wardrobe works for everyone because... Um, if I look at myself, I never wear jeans, I never wear white, I never wear black. So why should I have a white blouse and a little black dress? That doesn't really make sense. So a capsule wardrobe should suit you and it should suit your life. I'll come back to that uh, later in my presentation. Because if you would look, these images come from uh, last year's uh, Lynn Challenge. And uh, you see how personal and unique a capsule wardrobe should be. So um, it's not, if, if that like demotivates you, if you think like, oh, but it feels like without creativity or without color, a capsule wardrobe can look however you want it to look. Um, there are some uh, rules though. Um, we'll talk about the rules for the Lynn Challenge later, but in short, I would like to mention the rules for a capsule wardrobe in general um usually you have uh, between a 30 and 37 items 
And those items include your shoes and coats, exclude underwear and socks. And um, some people have one capsule wardrobe all year round. So that means they only have a 30 or 37 items for, for, the, for a whole year, for all seasons. It is possible, honestly. Uh, myself, I change two times a year and most people with a capsule wardrobe do that. Um, for me, this has a couple of advantages. Um, what I like about it is that I even have more overview. So in the Netherlands, the seasons are quite different in temperature. So in the summer, I like it that I don't see those puffy winter coats in my closet. And in winter, I don't have to look at the summer dresses and bikinis. So it makes my overview more peaceful and quiet. Um, I like it that I two times a year I go through all my items because before yeah when I change I look at everything I've been wearing are there items I didn't wear why didn't I wear them so it's like a evaluation moment to to improve my wardrobe and to take care of it like to bring items to the um uh, how do you call it clear marker like the the person who uh, repairs your clothing and um and also a very important one, it's a very happy moment when I get to change my capsule because it feels a bit like that moment when you get your Christmas decorations from the attic. So it feels like you have a lot of new items, although it's the items you already had. So those are the reasons why I choose to uh, change two times a year. Um, well, who am I? Because who are you listening to? Well, my name is Laura, uh, Laura de Jong, which is a very Dutch name. And I am from the Netherlands and I, uh, I studied uh, at AMFI, that's the Amsterdam Fashion Institute. And for my graduation project, I, I uh, quit buying clothes for one year in 2010. And this uh, project started with, uh, with 20 people, but in the end, over 2,000 participants from all over the world uh, participated in, uh, in not buying clothes for one year. And it was not an anti-fashion project. I love clothing, but I wanted to focus more on the quality and creativity in the fashion industry. And um, for me, it was very interesting to feel the, um, the 2080 rule in, in real life. So it truly was experienced that even though I could not buy new items, I still would only wear a small selection of my wardrobe. So 80% of the items were just there to fill my wardrobe. And... Um, after that insight, I continued my journey uh, to a more long-term sustainable wardrobe. Um, for instance, I did a study in color analysis. So maybe you're familiar with the system where you uh, can be a spring type or an autumn type. And um, what, what I really like about that is that you start to build a wardrobe around yourself instead of following uh, trends. Um, so this was my um, my wardrobe. In, well, when I didn't buy clothing for a whole year, but uh, then I thought, well, how how what's my next step? Well, how can I let go of all these items? And um, in 2015, it was the first time I heard about the capsule wardrobe. And well, this was my first capsule wardrobe. So seven years ago, I, I made this, and uh, I found it extremely frightening to let go of the other items. But uh, once I did it, I felt such a relief and I knew this was my way to go and that it also could be a solution for all other women that keep on buying but feel never satisfied because that was the most interesting thing. I felt happier with my wardrobe, although I only uh, kept 20% of it. So that was really interesting. Um, and here I am today. I uh, In 2020, when the, the start of the COVID pandemic I decided it was time to gather all I knew about creating a minimalistic wardrobe um, in a course. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm sharing my knowledge with as many women as possible. And by that, I try to make the fashion industry more sustainable as well. 
And the fun fact is that I photograph my capsule wardrobe every six months on a Brabantia Lynn uh, clothing rack. So that's where we, uh, that's where our stories uh, cross, where we met each other. And um, as you can see, the Lynn is very visible on my Instagram feed uh, as well. And that makes me extra honored to share my story here tonight. So before I go to the Lynn challenge, I quickly uh, check. Uh, I see some questions. I think it's good that I keep them uh, to the end because most of the time um, we'll go, uh, we'll come back in the story I tell. So that would might make it easier to save them for later. Yes, to the Lynn challenge because that's why we're here tonight, right? Uh, the Lynn challenge will start tomorrow, and. It's a perfect test to see how a capsule wardrobe will feel for you. So I'm, I'm very happy to see you all here. And I hope that I can help you to start doing it because I felt frightened when I started and it might feel a bit scary on beforehand. And, and that's OK. You're not the only one. Um, it's even in our genes that we love collecting stuff. Um, 8000 years ago, you would have a way bigger chance to survive if you would be good at collecting fruit and other food. So to be honest, nowadays we are past that point. I mean, our wardrobe doesn't really serve us anymore. It's it, it's more of a burden if it's that full, like with over 150 uh, pieces of clothing and which we feel guilty about. So we don't really need that much anymore to survive, but there's something inside of us that loves to have enough. And um, well, it's really interesting to experience how it feels uh, to do more with less. And that's, um, well, that's what you can do with the Lynn Challenge initiated by Balbancia. And uh, the core, the challenge is to select 20 items from your wardrobe and uh, only use these 20 items for 20 days. So um, these 20 items do include your shoes, but it's without your socks or underwear. So that helps a little, I guess. <laughs> and officially we start tomorrow. And um, if you start tomorrow, you can, uh, your last day will be April the 6th. If you can't make it tomorrow, um, I sometimes see this with my, my, my core students that, oh, I didn't start. Well, whatever, let it go. It doesn't really matter if you would start on Saturday or on Sunday or next week. It's just an interesting experiment experiment, and just go go along as long as you as you like it and see what happens. So it doesn't really matter if you would start a couple of days later, just start doing it. And of course, um, we would really love to see what you are doing. I will definitely check the hashtag Lean Challenge in the coming days. So you can use that if you want to on social media. And uh, tag Brabantia if you have a nice Lean rack and hanging your items there. Because, well, that's, of course, very nice for them to see and share as well. So um, I'm not only using Lynn, by the way, for the pretty picture. Because... Um, she's also very useful in taking good care of your items. You can imagine if you if you have fewer items, you you will cherish them more and want to take good care of them. And um, it's good to know that the phase of wearing and washing our clothes has the highest impact on the environment, even more than making our clothes or transporting them to our stores. And um, that impact is especially very high because we wash a lot. A lot of items uh, we wash after one day of wearing. And of course, for underwear, that makes sense. But like a woolen sweater, you you don't have to wash that often or jeans. Um, and that we don't uh, wear items a lot. Like a lot of items uh, are never worn. And so that really uh, makes the impact that high of the clothing. And we can lower that impact by wearing our clothing more often and taking good care of them. So, for example, air them out after wearing so you don't have to wash them after everywhere. So you can hang them on your uh, lean rack. And also, if you wash your clothing, don't tumble dry, but use your lean as a drying rack. So this rack isn't just pretty, she's very uh, useful too. 
so there are five, well, there are actually a thousand advantages of a capsule wardrobe, but I found these quite um, important. And I noticed that for a lot of uh, people, these are the, the most important ones. I'll just take a sip of my water. And the first one is that you will have a tidy closet or a rack. And that sounds very... <laughs> I don't know, obvious, but it really gives you peace and quiet not to have to push your clean laundry back into your closet because it's so full. So just to have space for what you own and to cherish it, that gives you not only like a nice view, but also peace and quiet in your head. Um, second is you finally see what you have. We we fi often find it hard to let go of items, even when we don't wear them. Um, maybe you have these bad buys in your closet, uh, items you don't fit anymore, items that you think you should wear, but you never do. Um, if all these items are still there cluttered in your closet, then it's very hard to see what actually is in your closet that you can wear. So you will get a better overview. Um, three is you... If you have only 20 items in a Lynn challenge, you only have space for your favorites. You can select these pretty shoes that hurt your feet because you're like, oh, no, 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 no. If I can only have one or two pair of shoes or maybe three, no, no, no. They should be comfortable. So you become really aware of what your favorite items are that always save the day if you need something to wear. Um, or that sweater that's itchy or that isn't your color. You don't have space for it if you can only choose 20 items. So only favorites you really use. That's very nice to see and step four is sustainability you will learn a lot about your style uh, you will um, and that helps you to avoid bad buys in the future and it will make easier to invest in quality items for the long term so you will buy less but choose better and that's very that will make the planet very happy as well and uh, the best reason although you have less you will have always something to wear did you know that your clothes kind of talk to you um what if you would start your day with mostly seeing items that you don't fit or you don't like anymore your clothes will say that you don't love yourself that you aren't good enough and that's not the best start of the day it's no good no, instead, from now on, you will open your wardrobe and you will only see items that you love and that you fit at the moment. And that's the best start of your day. And you deserve that start. So there we go. I will have a quick look at the chat. Oh, nice. Very cool. A lot of questions. Very nice. Keep them going. I think it will be easiest if I come back to them at the end. Nice. Thank you. And I like it. I see you chatting to each other. And that's very nice and always very allowed in my <laughs> presentations because, um, well, it, what I found really nice, what I discovered in the past two years, I, I don't know, maybe this is a bit too deep, but I, I became a bit frightened of some women. Like we can be so harsh on each other and so like judge, judging. Um, and in my course, sometimes I have like over 300 women and they all support each other and they cheer to each other and they make each other happy and they focus on their positive points. And I felt that is so encouraging these days. I think we really need that. So, yes, please help each other and, uh, and see, well, make each other happy. That's nice. Mm. Now I would like to go to you uh, with you to the five steps to a capsule wardrobe or how to select your 20 items for the Lynn uh, challenge. These are the same steps as I do in my uh, 30 days course. But uh, for tonight, I summarize the information a bit. I, I can talk about this for weeks, but um, we'll try to do it in an hour tonight. So um, step one is about inspiration, about your dreams. And why is this so important? Well, in the world of fashion, there is a lot of going on. Um, you might want to want to follow trends you uh, might be sensitive to sale or to bargains uh, you shop because you feel insecure uh, you might feel the urge to buy the same dress as that one influencer on instagram and 
all of these reasons are not the right reasons to shop. It's like impulses from the outside. It's not, um, you should buy something because it does something for you. It should make you feel confident instead of insecure. And it can be quite hard to start listening to your voice from the inside and develop your own style. I mean, it's, you have to get dressed every day and still we don't ever learn something about it at school. I think that's quite strange. Um, and a good way to start practicing this is by making a mood board, for instance. So open Pinterest and uh, start collecting images that are you, the style you want. Um, this might take some time if you've never been really thinking it from your perspective, but always like from the outside perspective, this is something you can do in one evening. So start making that, that Pinterest board, start collecting items and make this like a long-term project. Because the Lynn Challenge is starting tomorrow, <laughs> I decided to give you an easier assignment for that. And um, what would be a really good start for the Lynn Challenge is finding your five favorite items at the moment. Um, and items you wear a lot. So um, what's interesting about this is that these items already will tell a lot about your style and of the needs you have towards clothing. So I made this little example and this person is not existent, but <laughs> I, uh, she selected uh, jeans and a sweater, both a kind of the same uh, color. So she likes like this monochrome outfits. Um, she selected also a skirt and a dress. So there is like this balance between practical jeans, maybe when you go biking or you may take a walk in the woods, uh, but also she needs this skirt when she has a party. Um, and this dress uh, she likes to wear in several ways. So like with sneakers or with uh, heels for several occasions. So I'm really curious if you would pick your five items and if you look at them, if it would say already something about your style, that would be step one. And then step two is have a look at your life because, yeah, it's really, you might need to think about this, but one of my biggest insights in this capsule wardrobe process was uh, that there's a big difference between the items we like to buy and the items we need in the morning. So for me, I love these heels. Uh, the red ones, these are my shoes, and the red ones uh, were my wedding shoes. And I still love to look at them. And oh, in, in my fantasy, uh, fashion fantasy, I would wear these shoes every day. I mean, they would make a lot of items a lot more interesting and spicier, and I love it. But then there's my life. I have two small children. <laughs> I have some uh, pelvic problems. So in the morning, I'm looking for sneakers and boots. So I can't wear high heels all day, especially not if I'm biking to school, if it's rainy in the Netherlands or even freezing. And I, I, I get cold easily. So I just want closed sneakers or boots that are flat. So that might be an interesting balance for you as well. Like, what are the clothes you really need if you look at your life? And here I made this example. Uh, of course, for the Lynn Challenge, you only need to look 20 days ahead. So it's um, good and interesting to think about this. Uh, what do you do in your life? Do you work? Do you go to school? Do you have a dog that needs to walk every day? Um, do you have anything special during these 20 days? Like, do you have a wedding or um, a special event? You would really need to wear that one suit too. And also think about the temperature. So what temperature can you expect? You will see it at the end within 20 items, there's a lot of space to like for a big temperature range. So we, we easily think like we, we run short in items, but 20 is quite a lot actually. Don't be scared, you can do this. It can also be interesting um, to think like, what do you really, really, really wear? Uh, I see people often exclude their homeware, for example, but then they come home every day and they take off their, uh, their outside clothes and they put on these sweatpants and a sweater. 
if you wear these items every day, I think they should be in your Lynn challenge. And something to think about is, do you invest most in the items you wear the most? So if you wear those sweatpants every day, you might think or consider in the future to buy maybe a very nice sweatpants that makes you happy in a color that makes you happy. Um, well, something to think about. So that's the, the practical side. Like what clothing do you need for your life? The next step is a personal color palette. And um, well, of course, you've seen those different Linrex in the beginning, right? From last year. Um, so you've already seen that a capsule doesn't need to be minimalistic in, in use of color. Um, in my work, I would like to uh, focus on the colors that suit you best. And color is a very, very nice theme to know more about. And that's about for several reasons. Um, if you choose a color palette, everything matches with each other. And with choosing a color palette, I don't mean you can only buy four colors. No, you choose a certain color family. I will show these families to you in a bit. Um, understanding more of color can give you uh, trust and confidence. And you might finally understand why you never wear that one sweater and wear that one dress so often. Very often, this is because of what the color does for you. If you understand that and you are aware of that, you can avoid bad buys a lot <laughs> and it will give you a trust. I know a lot of women buy a lot of black because they feel like, oh, well, then I can't make mistakes and I don't, people don't, will not really look at me. But you are also worth it to be seen. And if you know what color suits you, that might give you that, that little push to, to start wearing other colors than black. And if you know what color suits you, you will never be out of fashion. There's this strange thing with color, like one season we all wear lilac and the next we switch to orange. And that's a big load for the, for the earth to carry that fashion dictates which item are, are valuable or are worthless. Um, if you stay true to colors that suit you, you will never be out of fashion. If orange looks great on you, no one will say like, oh my God, that's so 2020. No, if it's nice for you, um, yeah, then people will, will accept it and, and look at you and see like how you, how radiant you look. Um, also good for you, you don't have to invest in a whole new wardrobe every season and that benefits the earth a lot as well. So um, I will talk a little more or a lot more <laughs> about color analysis in the coming slides. And um, it's quite a comprehensive theme. In my courses, I talk a whole week about color. So we won't make that in one evening, but um, just see, maybe you recognize one of the characteristics I describe. And if you don't, it's also perfectly fine to just pick a color family that you like and already have in your wardrobe. You're like, oh, most people are very, like if you ask what color do you like, they might say blue or yellow, but there's a blue and yellow for everyone. So it's interesting if you would start at a whole family, a group of colors, then you might have a preference for one or two. Um, oh, and if you think like, I know what colors I like and they come from different families, please go ahead. I mean, there's no color law, there's no fashion police that will check if you live by the theory of color analysis. But it's just a gesture, a, a little help. For some people, this is life-changing and a big help in finding their style. So there we go. Um, <laughs> about the color types, maybe you are uh, familiar with the seasons. Uh, most people ever heard of that. Um, so you could be a spring type, a summer type, an autumn type, or a winter type. Um, most of you might have a preference for one of these four. Um, you can imagine if you want to like categorize people from the whole planet in <laughs> four categories, they will be quite different like you, in, in looks in each category. So that makes it quite difficult to see for yourself in which category uh, you would uh, belong. I found it a bit difficult sometimes to talk about these categories. So don't ever feel like it's a, a judgment or um, 
a label. It's just a better understanding of what uh, matches your uh, hair, skin color, and eyes. And you're always free to do with that information whatever you, uh, you like. Um, what's easier to see is your main characteristic. And there are uh, six characteristics in colors. And um, maybe you, if you are like uh, active in Photoshop or you um, uh, edit your pictures on Instagram, you might be familiar with them because you can also make your picture warmer or cooler, uh, deeper or uh, so more deep or softer, and more uh, clear and uh, more light. So that's... Um, that's also how it works with the color characteristics for, uh, for, for us. <laughs> and what is a color characteristic? Well, actually, it is that one feature of your look that stands out the most. If you enter the room, what will people see first? Or if people describe you, what words would they use? Um, one of the most easily to recognize is the warm colors. Um, uh, if your hair is red uh, or red reddish, or you have a golden glow, and maybe you have freckles, your characteristic could be warm. Um, if you have the there below, if you have a pink or a bluish undertone in your skin, your characteristic, sorry, this is a difficult word, is <laughs> cool. Um, if you enter the room and people say, oh, those dark, this dark hair and those dark eyes, wow, then uh, your characteristic would be deep. If your hair is uh, blonde and very light and your eyes are light as well and your skin, uh, then your characteristic would be light. Um, if you have a high contrast, so like your eyes are popping out in a bright color, your hair is different, definitely a different color from your skin and your lips are a bit more toned as well, then uh, your color characteristic could be clear. And if you have a softer contrast, so the colors are a bit more closer to each other and you don't recognize any of the color types before, you might be a soft type. Uh, I will go through these characteristics now one by one. And don't panic if, if this goes too fast. You will receive a, re receive a replay tomorrow. So you can have a, a look at the images more thoroughly if you want to. So there we go. This is the warm color family. Those is this, I already said it before. This is the easiest to recognize. Uh, it's um, the red hair, golden undertone in the colors. They all have this yellowish uh, coloring. It, it reminds a bit of, a, of like an autumn forest, like the trees in autumn. And uh, on the picture on the left, you see my current uh, capsule wardrobe. And um, I chose a warm, uh, a warm color palette for my wardrobe. And then cool, you see how this is different. In the, in the colors that has been used, the opposite of warm. So these palette families are the, are very uh, apart, like on the different sides of the spectrum. And the opposite of warm is cool. And the skin uh, color will have a pink or blue undertone. And all colors have a, a pink or blue undertone as well. Do you see these have this yellow undertone? And here you see the pink and blues. Um, a good way to check if you might be cool, if orange is a horrible color for you, you might have cool characteristics. Like <laughs> I always say there's a blue for everyone and yellow for everyone, but orange is only for the warm color types. Um, well, like a bit too complicated. I was, but if orange is horrible for you, you could be a cool uh, type. Then there's deep. Uh, you have dark eyes, dark hair. On the example of last year, you see an all black capsule wardrobe. I think that's really nice as well, as long as it suits you. If it makes you happy, the capsule wardrobe is perfect. Um, but there are many colors that you can use because deep doesn't mean only black, but it means like for if you go from light to deep, all the colors from the middle to deep. So no like pastel, but like the bright pink, the bright red, bright purple can also be very nice for deep. And then um, a lot of people tend to choose black easily, but even the most deepest type is often um, even 
prettier with a dark green or bottle green or deep dark blue. So if you love black, that will be maybe an interesting experiment for you this year to try how that is for you. Well, then the opposite of light is, of, of deep is light. And again, that's not only pastel, but it's like the scale from light to dark to deep. Uh, you light types can wear everything from white pastel to the middle. So no really heavy tones, but they can have a bit more like middle green, middle coral, middle yellow, uh, middle blue. Um, oh yeah, the light type, very blonde hair, light skin, mostly blue or green eyes, but really light brown can also be the case. And here you see an example of the light uh, wardrobe as well from last year from Coquerella. I love this uh, capsule wardrobe a lot. Vintage, uh, Sandra, she's very nice to follow. And what I like about it, that this is the example that a capsule wardrobe shouldn't be boring. If you know her house, it's full of color, full of prints. So please have your wardrobe uh, following that and show who you are and what you like. Um, the bright types, they, they have these popping eye color. Uh, the hair stands out. So there's usually a lot of contrast. And you see that in those colors. Like um, they, they love to combine orange with blue or pink with green. They're not afraid of clashing colors. And the opposite of that is the soft uh, type. And those colors are more powdery. They are a bit grayish. Um, there are a lot of soft color types in the Netherlands, so I can imagine that goes the same for other countries listening. Um, and soft has this lower contrast, so not extremely cool, not extremely warm. Um, if you don't recognize any of the former characteristics, this might be uh, yours. It's often a very popular one. People like this. Um, I don't know, they find it like nice colors, but not too outstanding. I guess a lot of people um, found that comforting. So if we look at our um, example, she uh, has this uh, soft and warm uh, palette. And what's uh, again good to, to, to um, emphasize, it's like you don't um, only can wear the exact those 10 colors. Like you don't have to look for exactly that orange or exactly that green. It's a color family and um, everything that blends in well can go in your capsule wardrobe. So the next step is how to uh, combine items. Color is very helpful uh, in that because I already explained if it comes from one color palette, all these colors will go well together. The other thing is there's not like one advice I can give about combining. Combining is learning by doing. We think we can do it, but you just have to start doing it. And don't do it just before you have to leave the door for an important meeting. No, take a couple of hours in the weekend and just start experimenting with the clothing you have. Um, I will give you two um, assignments that I also use in my courses and uh, you can experiment with your Lynn Challenge items and see what happens and what combinations you might think of that you haven't think of before. But before we start doing that, I, would, I have one more um, question. Here we go. Yes, there it goes. And the question is, how many combinations can you make with eight pieces of clothing? Is this one to 10, 11 to 20, 20 to 30, or over 30 combinations? So can you, I don't really, ah, yes, there it goes. One person dares to vote, ah, cool. How many combinations can you make with eight pieces of clothing? It feels like eight is not a lot, right? So you think like, oh, that top with that bottom and that top goes with that bottom. But um, the answer is, <laughs> here we go to the next slide. With eight items, you can make over 30 combinations and it can almost be done with all outfits. 
And um, it's not easy, I will tell you. <laughs> but that's also why I made this assignment. It's quite difficult to come to 30 combinations. You have to do things you normally don't do. And that's why it's so interesting because therefore you will discover things you didn't know before. And you don't have to wear all of these 30 combinations. It's actually really good to also feel like, oh, this is some, a combination I like. And maybe you can discover why you like it so much. And to see, oh, like, oh, I don't like this at all. And um, why? Why? <laughs> I would never wear this. But why would you never wear this? I see in my courses often that uh, people find out like, oh, but this pants, I thought it was really nice, but I can't really do anything with it. So I never have to buy this model again. See, so that's also what you could learn from uh, from doing this. It would be good. On the left, you see an example I did for a recent um, for my uh, for my blog. Um, but it's um, even better if you take you wear all the combinations. You really try them on and make pictures of it of yourself in the mirror or with the self timer. And then afterwards, you can see all these uh, combinations, and then you will really learn about what they do for you. So I um, I made it also with this uh, with our our example uh, wardrobe, <laughs> and on the left you will see the easy combinations, the dress just as it is, um, the combinations as she would usually wear them. But then okay, then you think okay, I can wear these jeans with this top, or I use the blouse with the uh, skirt as well. Um, you also see some examples that people often forget. So for a dress. Um, try to wear stuff underneath it and over it. If you wear a sweater on top of your dress, it will become a skirt. It sounds very easy, but it's, <laughs> it's something we easily forget and it makes uh, dresses a lot more versatile for the whole year. Um, and also layer stuff. See what happens if you wear the blouse under your sweater and you have just this little collar uh, popping out on top of it. So that's a challenge for all of you. I'm curious to see if you will, uh, if you dare to uh, to try. Um, and the other assignment that you can do is uh, reproduce an image from a mood board or from Instagram with items from your closet. We have this impulse. We see something nice on Pinterest or on Instagram, and we think, "Oh, I need to buy something new." Um, but you will be surprised or probably shocked <laughs> if you try to reproduce it with something you already have. Um, and I admit, <laughs> this was really, I felt a bit of a, sh a bit ashamed. On the left, you see an, an outfit from Cezanne. It's a French brand and I, I don't know, I adore everything they make. I love it. I saw this image and I thought like, oh, I need to have this. This is so me. And I was, I already had it in my basket in my, uh, in the web shop. And, and um, then I thought, okay, no, no, no. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I promote this, this uh, minimalistic lifestyle. Let's see what I can do with uh, what I already have. And then I reproduce this outfit and I feel ashamed because it's like literally the same. Um, it doesn't have to be this much alike. <laughs> if you have a green skirt instead of this coral outfit, that's fine, of course. You don't need to copy it, but see if you can get inspiration from it instead of that you feel like I need to buy it to look nice again. And then step five is finally selecting your items. So we have uh, these uh, five from the beginning, your, your mini mood board, your favorite items from your wardrobe. And then we had the color palette. We have this uh, um, assignment with the eight items, 30 uh, wares, uh, 30 outfits. And then I would usually suggest you will uh, start adding the bottoms. Like um, on average for each bottom so so like like uh, like uh, pants or a skirt you would have three tops so uh, the 20 items also include shoes i think i would advise two or three pair of shoes uh, four bottoms and then 11 tops and that leaves two spots for dresses or jumpsuits or maybe some extra shoes it just depends on on your needs on what you need in those 20 days um, of course, this is an average. So if you only wear dresses, please adjust the amounts to your liking. So this is just um, 
a guideline that might be helpful. So you don't, you need uh, less bottoms and tops. That's usually a rule that works for almost everyone. And then here you can see what happens if you add the tops. And then here you see the jumpsuit and the shoes uh, extra. And I don't know how you feel. Do you feel like this is a lot? Or, or do you feel like, oh my God, I can do this for 20 days. I, I was actually surprised. I thought this is quite interesting. I think you'll, next year we make the, the Lynn challenge like 30 days, 10 pieces. No, <laughs> joking. But um, yeah, I think it's doable and it will be interesting for you to feel how that is for you. Um, what's good to see if you, I, I usually put my capsule wardrobe on the floor like this. So I put my tops together, my bottoms together, my shoes, and I just start looking from top to bottom, like how many combinations can I make? Um, if I buy something new, I have this guideline for myself that I should immediately come up with at least five ways to wear an item. And for the lane challenge, I would say at least three because yeah, well, if you have a minimal wardrobe, uh, you want to make the most out of, it, out of it. And it's nice when the blouse matches your pants and cardigan for colder days, but also your skirt for warmer days. Um, and two, it forces you to develop your style, to make choices for the items you like the most and it suits you the most. If you buy a new dress and you need also new shoes and a new coat, then it's often an item that's a bit too far of your comfort zone. That's not, doesn't suit you. Um, probably you want to buy it because it's on trend or it looks nice on that influencer or it's on sale. Um, that's not, not the right reasons to buy something new. And three, you will get away from buying fixed sets of clothing. So um, if you have fixed sets of clothing, that requires a lot more planning because if you uh, have that shirt in the laundry, uh, you can't wear the matching suit. And if you find at least three ways to combine items in your Lynn Challenge selection, that will make your life a lot more easier. So there was a lot of la 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 <laughs> talking. Um, if people might leave soon, I don't know how your uh, focus or attention still is at the time of day. But then first, I would like to say, if you um, start with your Lynn challenge, I would love to see your capsule wardrobe. You can definitely send me your pictures, but even nicer if you share them on Instagram and use the hashtag Lynn challenge. Um, and then I will go to all the questions. Cleo has been... Um, gathering them uh, for me. Let's see. Okay, I'll just start from the top and see uh, how far we can uh, make it. Uh, Mo asked, is that including underwear and sports? Well, um, I usually don't include underwear and sports in my capsule wardrobe and for the lane challenge that's also not the case i do have a little if sport is your work like if you're a teacher it might be interesting to see if you can add them to your capsule wardrobe as well and also for my people in my course i always say you can't use it as an excuse as an excuse so they're like oh i only have 30 items but I have 50 sport leggings. So <laughs> see if you can be realistic about how many sport clothing you uh, need. Um, Yvonne says, I have four pair of jeans and six cardigans, 10 basic shirts, and that is it. Uh, I would really like to wear something else than a cardigan and a pair of jeans. So I seek inspiration. Um, yes, that's an interesting question because my first question back to you would be, is there really a problem? Because what I often see in my courses is that people think they need something more glamorous or they need what the neighbor is wearing or what the influencer is wearing. But in the end, if they look at what they have, they feel at home in these clothing. So that could be the case. Um, <laughs> if we buy something new, we often think it should be something really different. But usually... Um, buying more of what is really successful for you is usually more successful. So maybe adding an extra pair of jeans could be more successful. Um, 
if you look if you want more inspiration and you think no i this is like i don't know my old me or i would like something else i think it would be interesting to find out what it is you want so pinterest will be really interesting for you and start pinning images and just in the beginning don't be too difficult just pin everything that your heart says oh i like this oh i like this and then if you have more images on your board you might want to see patterns and you think like oh I see a lot of women wearing a very nice scarf or a nice jacket. And then you could make a plan to find one for yourself. So, uh, yeah, maybe I hope that helps. Uh, Sandy asked, did you upcycle as well? Um, no, actually not. Um, what can I say in short about this? Um, for the fashion industry, the problem is that we're making too many clothes and too many of those clothes are not worn at all. Um, the best would be if we wear clothes as clothes. So um, there are a lot of books and, and influencers that say like, oh, you can make a nice um, bag out of jeans, but it would be best if that jeans would be worn as jeans. So um, if I don't need anything anymore, I always try to find a destination. Well, I try to wear it until it falls apart, but as if that doesn't happen, I try to find a destination for it where it will be worn as uh, clothing again. Uh, Esther also asked about the sportswear. We've been talking the, about that. Uh, Annika said, do you think a lean challenge is possible to combine with a holiday? It's about 10 degrees warmer where well, I'll be for a little over a week. Uh, yes, I think so. Actually, it would be very interesting. You know, for holidays, we're often quite good at making capsule wardrobes for ourselves. Um, so, yes, I definitely think that's possible. Um, as you just saw, 20 is quite a lot. And uh, 10 degrees, that's quite a... Of course, I don't know where you're from, but here in the Netherlands, that's that's a quite a normal like temperature difference within a week. So that's definitely possible. Um, uh, Kate asks, what's with the stuff you don't wear in spring versus the ones you wear in uh, winter? Do you have items that you do not wear all season? And if you, uh, how do you store them? That's a very good question. Uh, indeed, some items stay with me throughout the year. Uh, so I have some pants and some sneakers that stay year round. So they just stay in my closet. And then I do store the other items outside of my closet because I do like the overview. Um, and, uh, I put them in a, in a plastic box. I have a lot of items from wool. So I put some cedar, I don't know, cedar wood in them against the moths in, 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 for the little butterflies. So they don't eat my wool. Um, and then I just uh, take them out again after the, when the, when the new season is there. Yeah. And before I do that, I always look at the, um, at the, how they are, like if there need to be buttons repaired or uh, do I need something to be fixed or changed or, um, yeah, I like that moment, like taking care of all the clothing you, um, you've you been uh, cherishing the whole season. Um, Kate says, also, what with clothes you wear uh, at work versus the stuff you wear in private? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I get a lot. Um, because for a lot of people, those are two very different worlds. Um, this, of course, also depends on uh, your working environment, because like if they have a dress code, then sometimes you can't really help it that you look different at work. Um, but what I see is that often um, if you dive into your style, for example, I had a girl who was working at the um, uh, uh, financial district in London, and she felt that she had to be very formal and uh, in blue and black and gray. And then she started to look into her style and she thought like, whoa, I like colors. And then she started wearing formal clothing, but quite colorful. And she felt so much happier. So the private and the formal uh, wardrobe came closer together. So that's something that can happen. If, it, if you think that's not going to happen, not at all, not in my life, it's really possible to um to have both in those 37 items 37 items is absolutely enough um uh, carrie asked do you have any advice on um finding your personal style well um that doesn't 
come like naturally. It's like sometimes when you look at people in magazines or on Instagram, we think like, oh my, she's she was born like this. It's not. It's a lot of like looking and uh, thinking about what you like and you don't like and to start practicing is like working on a mood board for instance and uh, what also works very well in my course is making pictures of your outfits every day and see how you like them and uh, you will see that some you will like more than others and can you find out why you like them more than others so it's um well, every minute you put into it, you will get some insights on your style uh, back. Esther asks, asks uh, do accessories like scarves count? Uh, no, they don't. I do see in my courses that um, if people start to minimalize uh, their hair clothing, they also can make easier choices on their jewelry or uh, they, their scarves. But you can uh, use them as many as you like. Um, Carrie asks, I would lo love some tips on buying good quality garments. Is there anything in particular you look for? I always just think of good quality as items that are expensive, but I know that's not always the case. No, um, I'm, I'm afraid I don't really have an answer on this, unfortunately. Um, I can explain a little about what's going on in the fashion industry. Um, if you would go like 30 years ago, the quality of fabrics would be uh, a lot, a lot, a lot better because we would wear clothing until it falls apart. At the moment, fashion is a consumption good. Like we buy snacks, uh, we buy a dress for the same price. So um, it's not made anymore with the thought that we should be able to wear it for a longer period of time. And that's even the case for a more expensive clothing that... Uh, the fabrics like they were 30 years ago, they're just not made anymore like that. So um, I often try to buy vintage items because if something already lasts for 30 years, it will last another 10 years in my wardrobe as well. Um, it's just very, there is a video, I, I forgot her name, but it's on YouTube and it says five five ways to check the quality of her garment. Now, it's... it's um, and she has some advice how you can look at the stretch and and like the hem like if there is um if if the fabric was cut in the right way but it's still it's not a guarantee i'm sorry about it um oh, i see some color questions that's always very difficult to ask on um or to to answer like this like um also because how people describe themselves it's not always how it's really um, uh, in real life so if you'll be interested you could google on the color types and see if you see people that uh, match your description um, or get a color analysis it's really valuable to have someone to look uh, with you and it's for me really difficult or like impossible to say something about that in the um, in text and for the lean challenge is just so don't get like hopeless if you can't uh, define your color type because it would also work perfectly fine to just pick a color palette that's in your wardrobe and that you uh, like uh, Inika asks which color are you wearing when people ask you you just came back from a holiday or when they say you look good I'm not sure what you mean but I think um, if if people only see the color, if if they if if you come in and they say, "Wow, that pink dress is amazing," the color might be not so well for you. The compliment you would would like to have <laughs> is like, "Oh, you look so well. You've been on. Have you been on a holiday? Or have you had a day off? Or um, you look so healthy. You look so well." That's usually a color that complements your uh, your face. Or if, if you have this this sweater and people say, "Do you you don't look so well? Do you feel sick?" <laughs> that could be uh, not such a good color for you. So maybe that also gives you an impression of what are your good and uh, less uh, colors. And Tina asked, "What are the um, the guide? Uh, what was the guideline again? Two to three shoes? Oh yes, I will." Um, I will get the slide that's interesting. Oh, no, I didn't put it in text in the slides, but here you can see it. So 
uh, in general. But this is, okay. think of how you use your wardrobe. But I would think of like four uh, bottoms. So if you wear a lot of jeans, you pick four jeans. If you wear skirt only skirts, you pick four skirts. Uh, then 11 tops you can have from sweaters to tops to blouse to jackets. Uh, two dresses or jumpsuits and three pair of shoes. And then you have 20. I'll put it, I will leave this image here so you can have another look at it uh, or make a picture maybe. Um, it would have been good if I put it in text in this image. I will do that for the for next time. And Stephanie asked, are any tips if you have uh, gained a lot of weight during the pandemic but are trying to get in shape? Yes, I have. Um, because you are not the only one. I think this is... Uh, one of the most asked questions. Um, so first of all, you're normal, that's okay. And um, you're already perfect the way you are because that's what a lot of women feel like. I'm When I fit my old clothes again, I'm okay, then I'm doing well. And I think it uh, would be great if you could feel very happy about yourself right now. If you've seen the, the practice, the assignment with eight items, 30 outfits, you, you've seen that you only need eight items to have already a lot of possibilities. So if you have a different size than you used to have before, take good care of yourself and get yourself some items, not 30, but maybe eight, that, suit, that fit you well at the moment. You can maybe find them secondhand and make sure they make you truly happy because you don't know what will happen next week or in two weeks or in one month, but you know that you will have to get dressed tomorrow. And uh, it better be something that makes you happy. So that would be step one. <laughs> and then I would take everything out of your wardrobe you don't fit at the moment because every morning you open your wardrobe and you see items you don't fit and it feels like you're not doing enough. And you, But you're great. You're already fantastic now. So that will be my steps. And then if you think you will um, be able to wear these items in the near future, you just keep them, of course. You don't put them away. But you don't want to start your day with these items. Uh, Elizabeth, if storing clothes on a lin rack, do they get too dusty? No, I don't feel that actually. We don't have animals or anything that might uh, be different, but I do have small kids and that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Deborah, Deborah asks, do you, the 20 items include basics like tops you would wear under a blouse or a sweater? I can't ask that or answer that for the lin. But in my capsule wardrobe theory, I don't. I see them as underwear, but then only if you don't see them. So if you use them as a color accent or you do see them under your cardigan, then I would count them. Um, and Marika says, since I'm allergic for wool, I find it difficult to find warm, durable and sustainable sweaters. What is a good material option? Oh, that's a difficult one because yeah, wool is perfect if you um, if you want a warm sweater, and cool cotton is like organic cotton. You could have uh, that's not as warm, uh, and acrylics. Okay, to to uh, in short, <laughs> uh, knits uh, often are combined in materials, so like acrylic with a cotton because. Only a cotton knit loses its shape and color quite easily. So um, the bad thing of that is that the material is more difficult to recycle after, uh, after the life cycle, after wearing it. Um, but the combination with an acrylic makes it a bit more warm, actually, because it's synthetic and that isolates. So there is not really, sometimes there is no perfect answer. Like, it also depends on what you find important. If you're allergic to wool, you're vegan, so they want to, don't want to wear wool. And, and it might be a vintage sweater that's very sustainable. And then it's acrylic or on the um, uh, in it. Uh, and it's already, like, produced. So, um Oreo Biscuits asked, what decade is vintage apply or 80s 
oh, there are official that, but then it's already maybe I should rather use the term second hand then. Uh, but if you would quality, these and below, yeah. And Mireille asks, do the 20 pieces also include codes? No, for the Lynn challenge is excluding codes. I think I have all the questions. I'll click to them. Yes. Uh, cool, Cleo, thank you. I'll just come back for a little moment. Hi, everyone. It's really weird to be talking for not see you but i see you have so many um questions in the chat so thanks for that um this um if you would have any questions afterwards oh now i need to image oh i can have them here we are um let me know uh, my instagram account is at uh, laura games um i'm always happy to answer questions on capsule wardrobes as you maybe have heard tonight and I wish you best of luck with your capsule water see uh, I will so if you use the hashtag Lynn challenge I will be below and we can all see each other's results and cheer to each other and uh, motivate each other I am um, it's coming in let me see thank you very much well uh, I'm very happy that you stayed until the end and maybe we'll see each other in the in the future. Thank you very much and uh, good luck with Lynn. See